In this video, I'm going to show you some great tips and tricks to get the best out of your jigsaw. So don't go anywhere, because I'll be right back. So the first trick I'm going to show you is Makita specific. Now with this model and a lot of other models, they come with a soft start feature. And if like me, you can't stand it, well, here's how to turn it off. So with, with the trigger turned on, you can see it starts on a slow speed. So to get rid of that, make sure it's off, turn it on, start with your dial at five, roll it to one, back to five again, and you'll see it flash twice. So now you have full speed ahead. And it lets you know that as well. So in the future, if you've forgotten you've done that, so you've got the machine off, you go to turn it on, the LED light will flash several times to warn you. To put it back on the soft start, if you want to have that feature back on, you just do the opposite thing again. So make sure you start with it off, make sure your dial is on five, turn it on, scroll it to number one, scroll it to number five, you see it flash, and we're back to the slow, soft speed startup again. So, but like me, I can't stand it, so I'm gonna quickly just put it back again so we can get onto the next, next trick. One of the many attachments you can get to go along with your jigsaw is a guide rail. Now this one in particular, not only allows you to do straight line cuts, so I'm just gonna put this in here loosely, you can just see, it just allows you to follow the straight edge of your timber, but this one also has a compass point in it, which you can unscrew, I won't do it, I unscrew it, comes out and you can put it into the other hole if you like, depending whether you're left or you're right handed, or depending on which direction you wish to make your cut. And by cut, I'm gonna show you in just a second. Just before we get into that, this machine in particular, with the fixing screw points, it didn't come with a bolt or a screw, so I had to find one myself. If yours is the same, it's an M4 thread. So moving on, I'm just gonna put this in at a random point, just, just for demonstration. Just screw it in and make sure it's tight. Now, what you need to make sure of is that when you put your blade in, it needs to line up with the edge of the compass. So the front of the blade needs to mark up, line up with the point, otherwise you won't get the proper curvature. And I'll demonstrate in a little while how that could cause you issues. But to get over the problem, what you need to do I'm just gonna, is take a square, and if I just line it up against the, against the side like that, and just bring it right up to the tip of the blade, and if you come over here, if I get that straight, you'll notice that the compass point is about a millimeter or so off of the edge of the square. So to get over that, we're just gonna change the angle slightly back to number one. Just to double check that again. Again, just check that it lines up there. And then coming back over here, you can see that the compass point is now tapping the edge of the steel. Now you need to check that of every blade because not every blade is the same. Different manufacturers are very slightly different size. You could have a steel um, cutting blade in here rather than a wood cutting blade and the thickness is very slightly different. Or you could have a very narrow blade on here for very tight cuts. So what we would do, just don our safety gear and I'll show you what it will do. So what I've already done, I've already pre-marked my center line just to speed things up. Yeah, compass point, take it to your desired measured depth from the edge of the wood. Um, I'm just gonna randomly just pop it in, uh, make sure that's gonna hit on there. So, and here we go. We'll just take it all the way around. Follow all the way around. And we can see that those 
angles are pretty similar. Now it might be easier actually if I take it, come back a bit further and cut a full curve on it without trying to waste too much timber. Now, ju just to prove that the cut is correct, take him a square again, and the edges should more or less line up. But as with every jigsaw, it's never 100%, and you always have to finish it off anyway because you've got all the, all the off cut around there, all the splinters to deal with. But you can see the edge of the bend there is also the finishing point on the opposite side. Now, if I just go back to what I was saying a moment ago, so if I put this back onto number one, so now the blade is out of line with a compass point, and we'll do the cut again. Taking the square, and it's very obviously, there's about three, two to three millimeters out from the starting point to the finishing point on the other side. So it is important that you get that all lined up and ready to go. So for tight cuts, I'm just gonna show you that this isn't actually very good for it. Even when you change the blade to a smaller one. So if we just come in here, I'm just gonna randomly start chopping away. And what you'll probably notice is that this will, the blade will jump out of the guide. So I'm just going around a big full circle. And there we go, you see? Hasn't even got halfway around. And if you bring the camera all the way around here, if you can, you can see that the blade has jumped out of the guide. So using the compass on the rail isn't good for trying to do curves. But then if you're trying to get a really good, perfect circular curve, then you do something like a hole saw anyway. So say you don't have a drill to start your hole so you can drill into the wood, leaving the outside preserved. Well, there's another little trick here. Now this one you do have to be careful with. And if you're not sure about how to do it, if it also if you're not confident with the speed of it, roll it back down to one uh, and just do it on the on a slow trigger. But I tend to I like to use my fingers to control the speed, so I have to do it on five. So say I want to cut a shape at the centre of this timber, and obviously I don't want to cut into it like I have done there, because I want to preserve the edges. And I don't have my drill with me, and I don't have my drill bit to do my hole straight in. Well, that's where you can carefully use the jigsaw blade. Very gently take your blade near to the timber, and just start to slowly pull the trigger. And then just gently bring it against the timber, and you'll notice it starts to cut in. will bounce a little bit. And there we go, so if you pick the speed up a little bit, it will just go straight in. And there we go, you see the blade has made its way through to the timber. You also do angle cuts, so you don't always have to do a straight cut, you can do up to 45 degrees. Now with this tool, fortunate enough that the Allen key fitting is always attached to the tool. And you simply just undo the Allen key in the bottom of the base, which allows you to move it. And moving, looking at the top, you see it's got pre-marked points all up to 45 degrees. Now obviously you make sure you tighten that back up again. And that once you finish with the Allen key, you put it back 
so it doesn't get lost. So now, now that's probably the best thing to do with this as well, is to use a conjunction with a rail so you can keep your, your straight line cut. And this is where things start to get a little bit more difficult because you see the, the, the metal guard gets in the way with the screw. In this case, Oh, there we go, got it there. So here we go. Now you can probably see there's a 45 degree cut in there. I'll just come the other way just to uh, cut it out to make it a bit clearer for the camera but it doesn't mean I need to take the rail off There you can see it's cut an angle on there. This is obviously the in the, the non-straight one because I didn't use the rail, but you can see this cut along here is nice and straight. That's demonstrated by the piece I've cut off. So what's the dial for on the side? We've got a zero point, which means the blade is dead straight against the guide. And at each position, you'll notice that it moves it back very, very slightly. So it does several different things here and different reasons for doing it. One is for different materials. Um, dead straight gives you a slower cut, but gives you less um, splintering from the timber. Whereas you put it onto number three, which is right at the top there, it changes the saw blade backwards. So it allows it to get punched through the wood at the same time as we pushing your saw forward increasing the speed of your cut but the tear is a lot lot worse i should demonstrate very quickly here so this is on the zero so you can see there's a reasonable amount of tear through coming through and it, it was quick but not super quick. So now just put it onto three. And if I just show you here very quickly, if you just watch the mechanism, you'll see, once it's turned on, they are moving back and forth. Now that is, that's the mechanism pushing the blade forward at the same time, which aids with the thrusting action. So. See that cut through a lot quicker, but it did hack the wood and caused a lot more splintering as it did so. So I'll put a little diagram up in the corner of the screen here, which is the recommended saw blade against the recommended angles. So one angle is great for timber, is not so good for things like plastics or for metals. Similarly with the speed as well. If you go through too fast on plastic, for example, you'll end up melting it. Going back to the amount of tear that we get from the timber. Now we can reduce that by changing the blade. Now the one I've been using is gonna very, very coarse. As you can see, there's lots of very long, big teeth in there compared to the tight curving, the tight cutting blade, which has much smaller teeth. And again, you can go to the metal blade, which has smaller teeth yet again. Now, obviously you wouldn't wanna use this blade for cutting metal, because boy, you've just ripped rip all the teeth off the blade and you'll be shaking around like a jack in a box. But there's nothing to say is you can't use a metal blade on timber. Now, I'm gonna give you an example. So say that that is the extreme rough cut that was done on the number three setting. So if I we do the comparison using the metal blade on the third cut, and you'll just see the instant difference between the two. <laughs> Now that still went through very quickly, but 
look at the amount of tear that's happened on that timber. It's absolutely minimal compared to the, the one on the, with the larger tooth. Another reason for the different settings from zero to three on here is for when you want to do tight curves. Now, if you're doing straight lines, it's optimal to put it on the zero. But if you want to do a, a nice bend, or even tighter bend than that, then you want to take it to three because with a blade that's at a steeper angle, it allows it to turn at a steeper direction. So if we just change the blade back, I'll try it, show you with the, the little blade here. So if I put it onto one, I'll just have a demonstration here. <laughs> not very easy to do and I don't know if the camera can pick it up and I don't know, didn't know if the camera could pick it up then but as I'm turning it you can almost see the blade turning actually bending in the wood there it, it's struggling to do the bend to get around the curve so I'm just gonna put it onto three we'll do a similar thing again And already that feels so much smoother, so much easier. I mean, obviously there are limits to what you can and can't do with these. And I was being quite extreme at that point. But although the tear through is obviously a lot worse because of the angle of the blade, it was a lot easier and a lot quicker to get in there. So there we have it, there's some tips and some tricks for use for pretty much any and all jigsaws, not just necessarily the Makita one. One Makita tip though that I haven't mentioned. When cutting, obviously you can see that you do get the tear through. Now you can buy these tiny little plastic, almost covers if you like, that fit into the base to help stop the, uh, the splintering action from happening. Now they do just slide straight in like so um, and you do need to move the plate to make sure that the blade runs through the hole at the back rather than at the front. But I've used these and I've tried them and I've tried them and I've tried them and don't waste your money because you still end up with the same type of cuts. So there we have it. I'm sure there's probably a few tips and tricks out there that even I don't know, and I'd love to hear from you if you've got any yourself. And until the next time, please leave your comments below if you like the video, and uh, I'll see you on the next one.